Welcome back to New Rockstars. The new Eternals trailer finally awakens the godlike protectors of Earth after apparently snoozing or sitting out of every MCU crisis. <laughs> but why now are they entering the chat? What new threat is dragging them out of obscurity? Or are they really the friends who just show up to help you move only after all the big stuff is unloaded, but still take the biggest slices of pizza? <laughs> this is Rogue Theory. It's a show where we pitch the wildest theories for the movies we love. I'm Eric Boss. Going rogue with me today is a panel. I'm so excited about We got MT here. Hey, MT. Hey, what's going on, Eric? Oh, man, this is going to be so good. It's going to be so good, man. <laughs> it's going to be good. We got Jessica Clemens back on the show. Hi. And yes, we're thrilled to welcome to New Rock Stars comedian and host of the Blurts in the Hood show, Jay Washington. Welcome, Jay. Woo-hoo. Oh, man, I, I feel like I made it. I've been trying to get here for the longest. <laughs> and it's like, I just want to make sure I'm good. I clean my fingernails, I think. Like, I want to make sure they see me. I don't want people zooming in on my nails in the video but like, look at this cuticle. I'd be like, why are you paying this to my cuticle? So no, I'm happy. It's enhanced now. Put your fingernails up to your camera right this second. But no, I'm happy to be here. Seriously, I'm excited to talk about this and the subject because I'm one of the eight people I know total in the world that was like, yeah, this could be fun. I'm like eight people. Bro, I am I one of those Eternals. eight people. I, wow, three of the eight of them are in this one video. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to guess which three. I mean, that's what I love about Eternals is like, all of us on YouTube are, right now are like, yeah, okay, so here, this is what the Eternals are, but all of us are like, wait, wait, who are the Eternals? Who are the Eternals? Because <laughs> the Eternals, despite like what some of us sound like, we're talking confidently, we're all kind of playing catch up, be like, because they're not one of the bigger names. Yeah, they're not comics. super so popular, so it's easy to like sort of forget those Eternals details. But you gotta know the weird stuff. I think that's the thing people forget. Marvel, yeah. I always say this, when Marvel's did, Marvel did Guardians of the Galaxy, they proved they could do whatever mm. they wanted. Because That's you right. asked 95% yeah. of comic book fans or comic book movie fans, they had no idea what, who the Guardians were unless they watched the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. And so when they were mm, able yeah. to make you love a talking raccoon and a talking tree, the fact you hear about people who've been around since almost the beginning of time, and now you're like, oh yeah, it's Angelina Jolie. I'm here for it, let's go. Exactly. I'm here Great for point, it. Jay. Exactly. And I think the question we're now asking is kind of that question now in the MCU is like why the Eternals returning now in particular where like Mm. we can ask where they've been but like there's this interesting um, uh, description that they're putting out for the movie it's official from Marvel saying after an unexpected tragedy following the events of Avengers Endgame the Eternals an immortal alien race created by the Celestials who have secretly lived on Earth for over 7,000 years reunite to protect humanity from their evil counterparts, the Deviants. But like, Mm -hmm. how do the Deviants come back if that's the case? What is this unexpected tragedy and what has kept them from intervening in all these previous MCU crises? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. Go for it. So so again, I've been rereading my Eternals Dreaming Celestial Saga. Like, this is 400 something pages and then I have the Cosmic Origins. I've been rereading these for a while. I read them a long time ago. So what it is, I've had this theory for the longest. The sna- so they are they're dormant as to them being eternal in their minds, right? Sprite, who's played mm. by Liam McHugh, is going to make them dormant. After four snaps, remember, it's four snaps total. The initial snap Thanos does yeah. in Infinity War. The second snap he does to get rid of the stones. The third snap that uh, Hulk does to bring everybody back. And the fourth snap that Iron Man does. All four of those snaps, yeah. as Rocket said, releases a bunch of cosmic energy. That lets the Celestials mm. possibly know to come back. Who else is a Celestial? Galactus. Who else does it wake mm. up instead of the Eternals? The Deviants who've been living below the Earth. Yeah. So everybody wakes mm. up. And all of a sudden, Sprite is the only one that even though she's a kid, she still knows kind of who she is. Icarus has a clue, Mm -hmm. but Sprite will start waking more more than likely everybody up. And again, it's like now, as they said, phase four and five, we're going more cosmic and quantum with everything. So now what's Mm -hmm. this bigger threat? A celestial. The the two, the celestials that made the Eternals, humanity and the Deviants. (laughs) And then again, Galactus is an Eternal. I mean, a celestial as well as Ego to Living Planet, but he hella dead. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems like the the way to go, right? Is Mm -hmm. the snap just affects all these things. And we saw how cool it was when WandaVision revisited the moment where everyone kind of reapparated uh. from the snap, right? Like, oh I want to know who so among dry. the uh, Eternals might have been dusted, you mm. know, and how that affected all of them. But for sure, like, bringing in Galactus in this, like, 
this is such a prime opportunity to bring Galactus into the MCU, you know? I agree with Jay. I think that's a great way for them to come in. It makes the most sense. Uh, and, but also, I disagree. If I could have a t-shirt that says, I disagree, oh, I, oh my, oh my, oh, but I'm bringing in the trouble. So I think... I think that what I know that in the comics that was Crow that kind of was like we're gonna turn humans on each other so that mm. the uh, the Celestials can see that humans are just garbage. Uh, but I think Druig is actually gonna be trying to do something like that, and he's gonna be the one that's starting the chaos. And that's when we uh. see Sprite. I think Sprite did have everyone lay dormant, and Sprite's gonna Sprite has been. So I think Sprite is still doing that, like like the Neil Gaiman, like still doing TV and being like fa- crazy and fancy. But I think yeah. that's also doing it with uh, Kumail's character too. So I think both of them are aware that they are Eternals, but the other Eternals are still dormant and they don't want to wake them up because they don't want to get back to doing what the Eternals are supposed to be doing. But when Jurek starts f***ing up with all the humans and the Celestials come in, that's when they're like, we can't do this on our own. We have to go wake up everyone else. And I think that's when we see that scene of the volcano erupting and the clouds going (laughs) dark and the light shooting up. Those are the Celestials stirring up in different parts of the world. And I think that's where we see um, Cersei and Black Knight hanging out together because they're dating. I think when we saw... That's a boy uh, toy. That's those... not dating. That's Cersei's boy toy. <laughs> she got him as a boy toy. I don't even know what to call it. I love oh, it man. either way, but I think when she... Hey, I'm here for boy toys. But I think when she... Um, when we saw her walking and uh, what was I think was Ancient Babylon, but also in the same jacket she mm. was wearing in New York, I think that was Cersei coming too. I think she's in New York, but she's remembering, I used to walk these streets. I'm Cersei, like the Eternal. And I think that's why we're seeing like her with Black Knight now present mm. because none of, and that's what the Celestials are coming through with the cloud. I mm. I hope that makes sense. But I think yeah, that's no, ultimately it makes what's sense. happening. All those scenes we're seeing in the trailer are just flashbacks of their minds when they were like, cause they're like, oh, I'm dormant right now. I'm just a normal human. I think it's like those are the clips that we're seeing as them. I just had these weird ass dreams. I don't know why. I get dreaming out of Mesopotamia. I think Icarus and Cersei's like little (laughs) love thing, (laughs) the little love thing. I think that's just Icarus's flashbacks when he's coming to. I think he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I remember now. That's so cool. That shit got this dude with the sword and shit. I can't even say that no more. <laughs> wow. I, can't, I wake up and you with another man already. Like I think that's what I, I wake I up. Agree with. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I wasn't in no bed. I was sleeping in the mind, girl. Ain't you been keeping up with Dr. Umar? He hit too. Like what? <laughs> Yeah, 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 and to be clear to anybody who might be confused, when we're talking dormant, we're not talking like literally asleep. Sleep, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, your mind, you just forget your past mm-hmm. and you're just kind of a walking husk of what you were, just living your life without a care in the world. And then now suddenly all those previously blacked out <laughs> memories, just, like, it's like, oh yeah, I'm, oh, I'm actually married. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap, like, I'm married to the other Stark brother. Crap. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wrong one. This is Ronald <laughs> Stark. Yeah. Right Howard, now. what? Like, also, like, that's Brian, like, Brian. <laughs> like Brian Tyree Henry's character of Fastos, he's the greatest builder ever. Yeah. He's the greatest builder, mm-hmm. and he builds all weapons and everything. And he, one of the things is in the comics, he didn't want to do it no more. He was like, yo, I'm trying to live this life. And they're making a big thing with this here in the movie because he's openly gay in the movie now. So we're going to mm-hmm. see a, a man living a normal life, you know, literally a normal life, a gay man. But you know, somebody in there is going to be like, how dare they do this? He was like, shut up. But like, <laughs> but the thing is, when he's woken up, it's like, we need you to do what you're good at. You know, you make these weapons. We mm-hmm. need to stop these. And he doesn't want to do that. And so that's the beautiful thing. And then it also ties into people that keep talking about the Inhumans. But for me, it ties into the, this is going to start the mutants. This is the mutants jump off. Oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. I agree. Yeah. Uh, with that freaking, sorry, real quick. Uh, Oh, uh, which we can talk about later, but I want to put a freaking stake in the ground about it right now. When we're seeing in the trailer, uh, mainly your breakdown, Voss, about all of the older um, Captain America shields and how we're seeing them. (laughs) Two theories. A, I think Kumail's character, since in the comics he was just a really big fan of samurai, so he made himself a samurai. I think he just loves the Avengers, so he just wanted to like own memorabilia of Captain America. But two, I think there's also a possibility that Thena created those instead of... uh, Uh Because Thena did create... She was in the Neil Gaiman comics. She was like creating for Stark 
Like she mm-hmm. was on loan for Stark business and making weapons. Mm-hmm. Like she could have, mm-hmm. but I know that ties in too much to like, well, Stark's dad created it. And it's like, yeah, but like, this woman's been alive forever. Maybe she sparked an idea in him and then it Did came you, into that. Yeah, I mean, created or discovered, yeah. you know? Like, discovered something that was already there. We're all standing on the shoulders of someone else. Do you think that mm. Thena's mm. love is going to set all this off, too? Because Thena's in love with Crow, I, who's yes, a deviant. I want, I want it. I, I, that's I what want, I'm I, I do want to see that. I want to see Thena's love with Crow. But I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Also, because Angelina... Okay, so as, like... I want it so bad. I need because I love that connection with the deviants. I yeah. needed it, um, but I also think this is Angelina Jolie playing Thena in the MCU, and I think she's mm-hmm. gonna be like, not to tie it into that, but right now she's like, I don't need a man. I don't need a partner. I want to be a strong no. symbol for like women in the army. I want to be like, I needed to be Billy Bob Thornton as Crow. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I want she Billy Bob Thornton. Thornton. Think, Crow. I think she's gonna do everything so independently and be kind of just like whatever. Hey, she could be that. You just talked about boy toys, right? She can be an independent woman and still have her uh, true. deviant she squeeze could. on the side. I'm just saying she's strong and she don't need a man or deviant. Exactly. In the trailer, she kind of feels like she's like struggling with something. Like, or, like as soon as she cuts uh-huh. those like green ribbons, she looks well, like she's sad or so love. Where the hell is her dad? Exactly. I think her dad. Oh yeah, her dad. <laughs> With all spirits, we're getting a baby him. We're getting a baby Thanos because of the. Because <laughs> oh, for sure. You're getting a baby th- for people who don't know. A large or the brothers who one is the dad of Thanos goes to Saturn and makes you know goes to Saturn and the Titan and moves the Titan meets his mama and has this little ugly ass purple baby who just is really mad because he's like why am I purple and like he just because he he shouldn't be purple because Thanos is not supposed to be what my like, friends are purple what the. F- Going on here. Why am I purple? Why am I like, the only purple one, Mom? Like, bro, why the fuck am I purple? Like, there's gonna be a dinosaur in a thousand some years like this and shit. I don't wanna be this way. Like it just man. Well, MT, I wanna hear from you. What what's your theory for how like uh how what kept the Eternals it, like unaware and what is now why now are they joining the MCU? One of the main reasons why the Eternals are are activating now is because, you know, so, sort of similar to what, you know, Jay was talking about earlier. It's because of these these snaps that were happening on Earth. And, you know, if it was just one snap, it'd be whatever. But there was three snaps on Marvel Earth, and that is a big deal. And if you remember mm-hmm. in um I believe it was Avengers when Thor was talking to Nick Fury about, you know, you know, why all the Avengers stuff was happening in Avengers one. He was like, yo, you guys were messing with the Tesseract. And like, when you did that, it sent a signal to everybody in the world that earth was ready for Mm. a higher form Mm. of war. And so this is the Tesseract times six, three times. So the the Tesseract 18 times. (laughs) And so, (laughs) um, you know, this happens and the Celestials are like, what's going on over there? What, we left those experiments and they, they're being crazy over there. We got to go check that out. And so the Eternals are just like, oh shit, like the Celestials are coming back because we've been making too much noise. And, mm-hmm. you know, because one of the snaps ended up taking out half of humanity and therefore, you know, a ton of their celestial experiments throughout the cosmos, they're probably going to be like, Earth, we should probably get rid of this because it's just becoming a problem, you know? So, you know, it's that it's the host of the celestials that we may be facing mm-hmm. in the Eternals movies. Um, basically, yeah. the, the end of the world, which is why the, the song in the trailer is like, you know, hints at the end of the world. I think that the celestials right. are coming to potentially get rid of, you know, this human threat, um, that is yeah. annoying their experimentations, but that's hi, just. Hi. Jay's I, have their hand. <laughs> I, I have a question. Hi, MT. Are you basically yeah. saying? Are you saying that the Celestials are going to control all, delete the planet? Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Celestials want to control all, delete Earth because it's uh, malfunctioning. Yeah. I have a question for MT too. This isn't a callback or a joke. Uh, <laughs> do you think? We haven't seen it in the trailer, but do you think that the U.S. Army are going to get involved at all with any of this? We haven't seen any actual, like, normal human, like, involvement to the degree of, like, to the degree of, like, we need to fight back. But do you- I mean, I mean, if the Celestials end up do end up coming, you know, what did, what did the Army do when the Chitauri invaded? They tried to throw a nuke at it. And like to, to 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 end their problems. So like, if the Celestials come in on their ships, it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna gonna nuke it. And if you remember in the comics when the Deviants did that, like in the 
with the third host of Celestial, the second? I don't know. What a, what a, one of those. Um, the Celestials were like, we don't like that. And they started the oh, Great yeah, Cla- Cataclysm. Like, yep, so yeah. if the army does get involved, it, it probably wouldn't be good because the Celestials yeah. are way stronger than the United States Army. Uh, are you <laughs> Eric, 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 I have a question. Have a question. <laughs> Eric, I have a, um, my question is, MT, <laughs> Mary kill, and why am I kill of the other three? <laughs> Why am I always him. kill? You're not, not kill. It's no, Mary, bro. You gotta not, kill. You gotta I kill. get it. We all I get married, it. B. We all you're gonna married. kill either me or Jay. You're gonna straight up tell us right to our face you're gonna kill one. Yeah, you will let me know if I'm a guy, goddammit. You ain't gonna be no surprises. <laughs> let me know. Go sit here and ponder the shit. Let me know you taking me the fuck out. I just need to know if I'm done. Like, oh sit here pondering and talking about something. I don't know. Yeah. I got time for that. that. MT, you don't have to answer the question, but I, I do love that, like, this idea of bringing the Celestials in. I think they mm. they are kind of the villain, you know? Like, mm. own, that's why, if you're going to do an Eternal story, right? Like, it seems like you do need the Eternals to face off against a cadre of the Celestials. Like, mm. that's how you up the ante from the Avengers, because otherwise it's just like, well, if it's any other kind of calamity, the Avengers have been pretty capable yeah. of, of handling all kinds of threats cosmic or earthbound uh so the only thing that i could see you needing the eternals for if you're just talking power status wise are things like galactus or mm. silver surfer or celestials you know what do you guys think what the unimon is gonna look like because you know we're getting it yeah oh yeah i <laughs> yeah. think they teased it in the trailer um with the yeah, they teased with the bright yeah. light yeah i think it's gonna look fairly comic accurate i think that you know because you know we, we already have a brain in the MCU already with Ego. Ego was basically a brain. Yeah. He wasn't a person. He was a floating brain. Yeah. So there could be a yeah. tie into that. It's like, was Ego a unimind? In that that's like how when he flickered on, it's like, oh, I don't remember Whoa. that I used to be people. I'm idea. now Ego. You know, so like, I think we might actually get a brain because it's there's precedent for it. Idea. Yeah, I don't like to think that the Celestials are evil. I don't think they are evil. Did you say I, I know, think they're, they're just kind of neutral. Evil. I think they're... Just, they they're just neutral. don't care. I think they're neutral. Yeah. I think they're just the oldest th- living things on the planet. They're the gods, and they're just like, hey, if you guys look like and act crazy, we're going to have to calm you down. I mean, they basically was like, look, these are some mm-hmm. ape dudes. Let's fix them up. They took one. And <laughs> yeah. It was like, well, you are. Well, they're like, you normal. They got some other ones like, look at you all beautiful and blonde hair, blue eyed and dark hair. Then they did the other ones. They was like, well, we f- up. We went too far. We did. Uh, we did too far. I feel like they did the deviants so wrong, and that's. I feel like the deviants are another pair of like MCU characters that are just like, oh, well, walk in their shoes. They kind of got sent underneath the waters to live an eternity in darkness mm-hmm. and just yeah. be ugly. <laughs> The just because, basically... just because they're ugly, because they are smart. Most of them can talk. They are. The deviants are like Will Smith in that episode of Fresh Prince when Ben Vere was his daddy and he didn't want to take him in the truck. Oh, oh my like, god! Like, god. Like, wow. like the deviants You're just want to go there. They just want the like, saddest moment in television know. history. <laughs> Why don't no one want me, Uncle Phil? That's right, that's what, that's what the deal is. That Sorry. is so accurate, though. I gotta that's hang up this so call sad. right now. I did not so think sad. we were gonna get this dark. I like how you remembered it was Ben Vereen, uh, stage legend Ben Vereen. I never made that connection that that's who that was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. God. Well, they're like, that's uh, the rest of the demons. They all just, they really just sad. They're like, yo, we wanna be up here and shit. Y'all got nice son. And, it's it's Piggy Coladas and there's Kardashians. Now we were at this. I, honestly, I think they might actually make a case for this in this movie. I, like, it's not really based on will. anything. It's just a hunch. But like, you know, we see, you know, Killmonger. People love a good, you know, person fighting for disenfranchised mm-hmm. people. So, you know, maybe that's what Druig is in this movie. Maybe Truly. he's fighting for the ter- uh, for the deviants and, and their rights. And um, oh, but yeah. in the comics, I love the de- I love the rejected one. Um, also, because mm. he was really fine. But <laughs> I understand. That's what we. Are, that's, that's that's where your love come from. Like you know, what <laughs> he was fine. Yeah. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, guys. I gotta say, this has been not only the funniest conversation I've ever had about the Eternals. <laughs> I think it is the most informed and knowledgeable. Uh, debate slash discussion about what's going to happen in this movie because I think you're right. I think we do have three of the eight most knowledgeable <laughs> Eternals on Eternals. this call right now. Eternals is great. It's There's so, so good, many actually. people you can connect good. to in it. The stories are just so deep because it's like it gets if you when you read it, it, it gets real comic booky. But you look at the stories, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is 
like, oh, 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 these are heartstrings being pulled. Like, this isn't right. With the with the Celestials being involved in the Eternals, there is a chance that we could actually see, you know, Apocalypse or a tease of Apocalypse or I a younger we'll Apocalypse a mm-hmm. in um, mm-hmm. yeah. in Eternals with um, Celestial Experimentations or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, that we could, or, or even Namor, because Namor is the first mutant in Marvel mm-hmm. Comics, so mm-hmm. maybe... Instead of Apocalypse, yeah. who's been done before recently in the X Men franchise and for Fox, mm-hmm. we could mm-hmm. actually send, mm-hmm. end up seeing you know the origins of mm-hmm. Atlantis or, or oh, something oh, like that. Jay yeah. said, I see Jay shaking his head. No, I'm sure about the Apocalypse. Because I agree. We, we never, because we never should ever reference X Men Ivan Ooze. We should never reference him again, ever. <laughs> Why life. not? Don't you ever? Don't you ever? Don't you ever? Look, I don't, you know. I don't care. I don't care how right. hard and great of a performance Oscar <laughs> Isaac gave. He looked like he's the ooze. That's what he looked like. I've seen cosplays. <laughs> really in cosplays. Did, straight like, up. Like I've seen cosplays look better than than what the movie studio did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they yeah they really do need a reboot of Apocalypse. You know, it's actually kind of easier that Apocalypse was so bad in the Fox X Men franchise because mm-hmm. now Marvel gets to do them right whenever they want to bring in mutants. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully in this movie, uh, I want to award some points because this is Rogue Theory, and weirdly, I have to <laughs> award points just based off of whatever. Uh, so Jess, I'm giving you one point for uh, putting this all on Druig because yeah, I think Druig is gonna be a big part of this. Uh, maybe he is part. He is a, a loyal to the deviants i I love that idea for sure uh mt i'm gonna give you two points or bring this idea of uh of it alerting these celestials Mm. uh, and as jay said uh control alt delete uh, of them (laughs) but also saying that like mutants like uh like apocalypse could show up for sure jay i'm gonna give you three points uh because you had this great take of uh of like the idea of Galactus coming in, you uh, correctly identified the four snaps, which most people they can't recall that there's like more than one or two. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, and yeah, just reminding us of the interesting history of how uh, Thanos and how his bloodline with Alars and Suisan and his brother and how how he's connected to that whole genetic history. Mm. Uh, so good job uh, to all y'all. Uh, this was a great conversation. Um, yeah. So we're gonna talk about uh, some interesting questions around Jimmy Chan, who's playing. Cersei uh, in this movie in just a second. First, we want to thank some friends who helped us make this episode. Uh, well, quick shout out to our merch. Uh, you can find at uh, newrexersmerch.com. We have a great uh, assortment of t-shirts, hoodies, water bottles, hats, all stuff you need to do if you want to be an authentic New Rock Stars fan. I guess you can be a fan without doing it. What am I saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They got a gun at me right now. Yeah, buy our stuff, please. Uh, NewRockStarsMerch.com. We want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. Our friends at Blue Chew have a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, <laughs> but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. What you got there, Jay? Oh, my God. It's a Blue Chew. Oh, Is it really it. a Blue Chew? <laughs> Oh my God! Hey, Never man! In my days of working have... on this show, have I seen someone present? Wow! A card he was or ready for the ad. Oh, this ain't a That's... card. This is the actual pill it's in the, the actual... pouch. Wow! <laughs> actual pill. This is the flute. Let me tell you something. These are giving. We have great... a happy customer on the call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> great night. Let me tell you something. This is some ad pill here with the headache. God bless you, Blue Chew. Okay. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no doctor's office or pharmacy trips. It ships right to your door in a discreet package, like what Jay just showed us. Uh, you sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. Their licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength. And if you hate swallowing pills, good news, Blue Chew is chewable, just like it says in the name. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we got a special deal for our audience. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code ROGUE at checkout. Just pay the $5 in shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code ROGUE, to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. And we want to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Most of us have very little choice when it comes to picking our internet service provider because ISPs operate kind of like monopolies in the regions that they serve. They use that power to take advantage of the customers. Ah! And many ISPs log your internet activity and they sell that data on other big tech companies to advertisers. It's a mess. So, 
To prevent ISPs from seeing my internet activity, I protect all my devices with ExpressVPN. It's a simple app for your computer or smartphone that encrypts all your network data and tunnels it through a secure VPN server so that your ISP cannot see any of your activity. Every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked by ISPs or other tech giants who can then sell your information for profit, and that's the reason I recommend ExpressVPN as the best way to hide your online activity from ISPs you download the app, tap one button on your device, and you are protected. And ExpressVPN does all this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by CNET and Wired. So stop handing over your personal data to ISPs and other tech giants who mine your activity and sell off your information. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust to keep me private online. Visit expressvpn.com slash rogue. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash rogue to get three extra months free. Go to expressvpn.com slash rogue right now to learn more. All right, so back to Eternals. Jimmy Chan, the star of this movie, is playing Cersei after mm. also appearing as the Kree Minerva back in Captain Marvel. Now, obviously, this seems like a case of Marvel Studios just recasting an actor from a smaller MCU role to a more prominent one and just assuming fans won't get too hung up on it. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, but... <laughs> It's, you could say this isn't unprecedented. Laura Haddock played <clears throat> Meredith Quill after she had already played uh, Captain America fangirl uh, back mm -hmm. in the 1940s. And James Gunn has confirmed that those characters are not related. And soon Michelle Yeoh is going to be in Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings playing uh, after she played Alita O'Gord, uh, one of the Ravagers in Guardians Volume 2. But I want us to go rogue here and speculate that there could be some in-universe explanation for Jimmy Chan in these dual roles. Should we be? <laughs> go ahead. I went first. <laughs> yeah. Just it is true. Her and had to go first. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, like Voss said, I do think uh, it's not going to be too crazy. I think they just switched characters. But if they want to go crazy with it, what they can do, so let's say there is a Kroll. Uh, scroll, scroll. Sorry, I don't know why I said crawl. There's a Nick crawl. There's a scroll, right? And it's not a good scroll. And it does take her identity. What better mm. identity than to take than someone that's an eternal? Especially if after mm. this movie we figure out who, like, we know Gemma Chan as Cersei. Someone takes her identity as Cersei in the future and is just like, not like, it's not gonna be like how, um, uh, Sh Shang Chi's father. It's not gonna be like, oh, oh, I'm actually like so and so, or like how people like use him as just like uh, use his character as I forgot what a doppelganger. The Mandarin. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like how everyone was like, I'm the Mandarin. I'm the Mandarin. I'm the Mandarin. I don't think uh, it'll be like mm. that, but I think there are gonna be an opportunity later on in the like, even if it's Scroll Invasion, where they're just like talking and they're like. I'm Cersei's, and they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, Cersei, we need to listen to her, but it's actually a scroll. Wait, so do you think the member of the group that we saw in Captain Marvel, the Kree who were like chasing down and hunting down scrolls, do you think yes. she was a scroll yes. like mole yes. on that yes. team? Yes, yes, yes. What? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. That is yes. wild. Like, that is some 40 chess. You have to go, you have understand. to, <laughs> no, you have to go crazy with it because, okay, realistically, sure. in the movie, of the world of Hollywood, yeah, I don't think it's crazy, but it's gonna, let's go crazy. Jay's yeah, hand it's is true. Okay, that is Jay, pretty Jay, what do you think? Cersei likes okay. to get a party in a freak on. I would not be surprised <laughs> if Cersei bangs a creep. Cersei, Cersei like bangs a creep. <laughs> She okay, this is rogue. This okay. is rogue. -er. Cersei has sex. Cersei parties. Let's be real. Cersei has been through years. Like we don't know how many kids Cersei been out of here with. Mm. And then she got a she got an eternal elliptical, and she can keep her figure down. <laughs> she got the best of mineral waters. Ooh. It's probably just a kid. Like again, Minerva uh. may be a kid or distant. Like, I'm, Y'all said go rogue. Don't, don't oh, give me no. Don't give me no. That's really no, good. I, I like the, that more than. Scroll. I like the minimal rotter joke because of the trailer. Because she puts her she hand goes, in the water and the water comes out. And then she That's immediately shoves her face in and drinks it. It's yeah. good mineral water. No, no. It's literal mineral water. So wait, water. I have a question for Jay. So yeah, Athena has a child eventually with a human. So you think uh, that Cersei can have sex with a scroll and it'll be a scroll? No, it's a it's a oh. creep. With oh, the it's Cree. Oh, it's a Cree. Because Sorry. she's blue. Yeah, she's, she's blue. She's blue. She's she has blue. sex with a Cree. Okay. And a Cree may be, because of the light, we might find out a Cree is an offshoot of a deviant. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So actually, it isn't that rogue. It makes complete sense. Yeah, it actually, I'd buy that theory. It's <laughs> pretty good. Don't ask me no questions. You know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to be right. I'm going to be right. <laughs> Uh, MT, you had some thoughts on this. What do you think? So Minerva dies in Captain Marvel. And so I think at that point, at that death, we get a rebirth of, of the character of Cersei, who is now done with this life as this, you know, 
jerky Cree Minerva. And Minerva is, the name Minerva is, uh, is, is Greek or something. And like, yeah. there are, it's you know. It's the, the Roman name for Athena, I think. Right? Yes. And so like, these are, you know, very Greeky and like, you know, themed characters in, in their names. Is it Roman or Greek? I don't know. I guess get those Roman, Yeah, yeah. Yes. But it's it's the same, yeah. Yeah, okay. same shindig, different era, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think that this name Minerva is significant because it is, you know, tied to the eternal type deal. Mm-hmm. So when she's reborn, okay. she's like, oh, wait, I was an asshole for my, my last life. I don't want to do that. And so we get, you know, that, that shot of her looking around New York like, I'm alive now. What's going on? And like, you know, like that, that Steve Rogers-esque, like, I, you know, in a different era now sort of mm-hmm. type deal. I anyway, would never get my boy toy. I think it's don't get your sword <laughs> and then bring your sword. Let's just fly. I, I think this idea of like uh, maybe Eternals have different incarnations that pop mm. up on different planets, or maybe there's like this is what the so the ten Eternals are assigned to Earth, right? But maybe these ten same actors were put in other places, like on Hala, on Torfa, mm. on all these other mm. planets in the MCU, mm. and then that's just like there's a Brian Tyree Henry walking around with the other Kree <laughs> on Hala somewhere, you know? I don't know. I, that's one way it could go. <laughs> I have some. Oh, you have some. Yeah, Jessica, ooh, what do you think? Ooh, ooh. I agree with. Um, I agree with MT, and also just to amplify the theory, the fact that in uh, I keep going back to the Neil Gaiman comics, but in the comics, like the people that are like dormant, they once they die in that form, they come back mm. as themselves, the actual superheroes mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. their plant or. I think it was on their planet or in a ship. Olympia. Either way, exactly. yeah. Okay, in Olympia. Okay, it was in Olympia. They come back as themselves. So if she did die as Minerva, she's coming mm-hmm. back as exactly. Cersei. Exactly. So uh, not even a, a crazy theory that it's true. <laughs> it could happen. It's just part of the Eternals mythos, really. Um, she uh, bangs a Cree. Stop it! <laughs> stop it. <laughs> she bangs the Cree. <laughs> You guys are listening. I, I hope the movie starts with those words, like the opening crawl. <laughs> like she banged the crawl. Crawl. <laughs> Everyone's like, who banged the <laughs> I'm going to give all three of you uh, one point uh, because I think together, collectively, we made that make sense. I think Honestly, way. yes, I do. I agree with all three of them. Uh, but well done. Um, all right, we have time for one more question that all okay. three of you guys are going to answer. This is our, our rogue question round, mm. where it's just where we get real silly, as if we haven't gotten silly enough. This, <laughs> this has been very serious up to this point. Now, now we're going to have to. Um, but okay, so here's our question. It was announced this week that the Pym Test Kitchen in Disney's Adventures Campus uh, at Disneyland uh, will sell a $100 sandwich that's meant to feed six to eight people called the Pimini. <laughs> wow. So the question is, what other ridiculous Marvel-inspired food do you want to see served at Avengers Campus? The Collector. It's nothing but <laughs> all of the damn lunch meats ever collected on <laughs> one bread. <laughs> it's like, what is there? Capicola, spout, spam, and, and Mark no Nelson beef. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a side order of Howard the Duck fries. Just oh uh, my god, oh, Jay's already good. thought of this. I feel like he's already had plans <laughs> to make an Avengers franchise. Of I just randomly thought about this. As you asked the question. <laughs> it needs to be on the menu. It needs to be on the menu. <laughs> uh, um, a, a thunderbolt uh, toss. <laughs> Salad? Thunderbolt toss <laughs> salad? Oh my god, no! Wait, wait, what? Oh, uh, that's the, uh, that's the Avengers <laughs> porn parody. Um, oh, oh, maybe not. That doesn't sound like something that you do not want. How does a Thunderbolt, is it an open ass? Just <laughs> this is some, uh... You said that! You this guys is quite said the that. meal. Y'all said that. I think it's a great Caesar salad. Y'all oh, no, you said wow. toss. Oh, yeah, you, you said, said toss Caesar salad. You're salad. You're no, that's okay, different. Okay, fine. You guys want to play the ass? You don't play the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't give a I don't give a damn. Oh, Lord. You want to go to Disney? Eat a salad. Eat ass? You want to go there? Ask for the Thunderbolt toss salad. Oh, my God. It's just two, it's two wheat buns, right? <laughs> Two weak buns. Oh my god. There's no meat. It's just two buns. And you just gotta. 
You just the, the, the sandwich spread in the middle, and you stop, just stop, 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 Shut it down. Oh. MT, do you have something that you want to try to heighten that with? All I can think of is not a really, it's not going to be a great the, like uh, theme park food, but like I can think of like Groot's fiber cereal. Um, <laughs> it's just wood. It looks like wood, but it's good for your, for your colon. I don't know. I <laughs> don't think it's it's for, this is for the elderly guests that come. And it's just like, I, my motility is not too good today. Both of our meals could. Uh, <laughs> Depending, go the well. The salad. Together. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want bran before you get your uh, salad toss. I don't know if that's a uh, type of order of operations. Oh, oh, I was just trying to stay on theme, but I made it worse. Oh, God. Uh, well. <laughs> as All right. I got to give the point here. As much as I love uh, Magnificent, I got to give the point to Thunderbolt Toss Salad. <laughs> you know what? I got to oh, give 100%. the point. 100%. Give her that point. I'm it was, disappointed. Uh, I never have not wanted a point so bad in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm giving it to you. You earned it. Uh, oh, but my God. If my math is correct, I still think. Uh, Jay, I believe you have won mm-hmm. this episode of oh, Rock Fury. Oh, oh, oh. Magnificent! James Washington with the dope. Magnificent! Magnificent! You win the prize of two wheat buns. What? (laughs) They're coming in the mail. (laughs) With the group side. No! I hate this. Oh, oh anytime Jessica says I hate this, that's our ding, ding, ding. The, the round We've is done over. It. <laughs> we did it. A dinner bell is wrong, and that means it's time for us to say goodbye. But I want to thank all three of our guests. A big congratulations to Jay Washington, yes. and congrats to us for enjoying your company this episode. Yes, thank you for, thank you for coming on. You were fantastic. Thank so you for funny. having me. It's been, it was always a pleasure, man. I've always been wanting to do this for a while, seriously, and. This was as oh. much fun as I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad. We're glad we lived up to your expectations. And be sure to check out uh, everything Jay is doing. He's a very funny mm. comedian, uh, sometimes a, a professional wrestler as well. Or is it professional or is it what, def- define what wrestling When they do. pay me, it's professional. When it's not, yeah, it's just right. he do to just run around <laughs> in some shorts and tights and wrestling boots. That's just... That's just Oh, yep. that's so cool. Uh, and then also Same. check out uh, the uh, the Blurts in the Hood show as well. Uh, also, thank you to Jess Clemens. Jess, yeah. where can we see you? Uh, Lulu underscore Clemens everywhere. Lulu Clemens. Team Jacob on gaming stuff. Thank you for joining us. And MT as well. MT, you have uh, some exciting stuff coming out on the channel of New Rockstars this week. You want to tease any of it? Uh, it's just some, you know, Eternals-related stuff, maybe with Thanos. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, we're, just, we're just talking about some, some, some Thanos, Thanos connections, you know. Oh, um, but yeah, you can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter or, you know, Instagram, wherever. So, yeah. Well, that's it for this episode of Rogue Theory. Thank you for watching. Support our many great merch options at NewRockstarsMerch.com. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe here on YouTube. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Take it easy, guys. Bye.